And Anthony Scaramucci, former White House Communications Director, you came from the investment world. It seems yeah. to me there are Democrats and some of the media who invested yes. in an outcome. There's no question. That well, the president was going to be brought down. Well, they're dug in. And so in the investment world, what you learn is that if you get overly emotional or overly attached to your investment, you can make really bad decisions. And so they're going overboard right now. So. What, you know, you look, looking through the report, are there things in there that I'm not in love with? Certainly, but let's start with the prima facie thing. He didn't do anything wrong. The president did not commit collusion. So how could you expect him six months into the presidency not to be frustrated or to express that frustration and righteous indignation about an investigation that turns out lasted over two years? Mm -hmm. so, so to me, they'd be way smarter. They want to try to beat him, try to beat him at the ballot box. So you're going to have a super tough time doing that because the economy is so strong. And he's generally very liked. You know, as long as the president gets out there and he lists the things that he's done for the American people over the last two and a half years, he's going to get reelected. You've got this new focus by Democrats on obstruction and then, of course, impeachment as a possibility. Does that go anywhere? I don't see how it could go anywhere. I think the smartest person is actually Speaker Pelosi. As she said earlier, six weeks ago, no impeachment. She's still staying on that sideline. I get that people are trying to raise money off the notion of impeachment. I get the fact that they have fired up their base with a tremendous amount of anger, and so they therefore can generate revenue and capital off of that. But again, it's another very big mistake because the middle of the country, meaning moderates and independents, have had enough. And the right, it's already so far back in the rear view uh, windshield. So, so to me, their best strategy would be, okay, who can we put in there uh, that can compete with the president uh, toe for toe on things like the economy? Economy, national security and things like that. What is as we go into the summer, the Democrats will be toe to toe. They'll be going at each other. What's the best mm -hmm. thing this president and the White House can do? What should they be doing to lean forward to, to you know, act with the Mueller report behind them to set the tone? Well, I, I think the uh, the president's got a real issue at the border. I think he's I th and he tried to cut an immigration deal with them bef uh, before the midterms. And so, if I, if I were there offering him that advice, I would say here are the five or six things that the American people really want. A growing economy, rising wages. They want this thing addressed at the border, and they want a resolution on the DACA slash Dream situation. All of which the president has presented viable, common sense resolutions to. And so, to me, I would just be repeating that ma mantra over and over again. Uh, and I would tell the president, relax. You won this thing, and in victory magnanimity. You remember Winston mm -hmm. Churchill said that. You and I are old enough to remember. Always <laughs> <laughs> points to me, Pete. Yeah, well, no, no, Pete's a youngin. You and I are old enough to remember Uncle Winnie. In, in victory magnanimity, be gracious in the victory. Let it slide. Go play golf and hang out. You're winning. Yeah. You know, no, no, no need to shoot down at these. Before people. we move on to some other topics, um, Joe Biden expected to get in this yeah. coming week. Bernie Sanders did this town hall with Fox a few days back. He's got a lot of energy. How mm -hmm. much do you think, as a capitalist, the president is itching to take on a socialist if the Democrats actually nominate Sanders? Well, I mean, if they nominate Sanders, uh, the only thing I would say to the president is remember what Secretary Clinton said about you. Uh, what Secretary Clinton said is, I'm desperate to run against you. OK, and of course, he cleaned her clock. OK, and so we just always have to be on guard. Uh, Bernie Sanders, in some ways, and I know the president used to say this on the campaign, was a formidable guy. Mm -hmm. OK, he's got energy, he's got charisma, and he can attract a crowd. Money. And so I don't want to be one of those people that loves the president and supports him and says, oh, we got nothing to worry about with Bernie Sanders. I would say, this guy's formidable. Let's amp up our game. Let's explain to the American people why a socialist experiment mm -hmm. for 150 years on planet Earth has not worked. Uh, and why we have the best strategy, we have the best system to lift all boats in a society. So yep. to me, I'm not saying I'm worried about Bernie Sanders, but I'm also not going to say, oh, that's going to be a no-brainer, we're going to slay him easily. Let's keep our guard up and let's yep. push very hard. I can assure you I'm not the only one stocking up on popcorn for those debates, the Sanders-Trump <laughs> oh, debates. Oh, that would be some good stuff. Fun. i got to ask you about this new survey about millennials finding that they're financially dependent on their parents. Seventy percent of adults ages 18 to 34 receive financial support from their parents in the last year. Also, 58 percent of adults ages 18 to 34 said they couldn't afford their current lifestyle without assistance from their parents. I read this. This is a huge problem. Why is this happening? I think it has to do with my generation, frankly. And so uh, you know, what, what basically happened to us, I have three millennials. Um, and so what basically happened to us, I guess our, our parents sort of let us do whatever we wanted to do. And maybe it was a little scary for us. So we're snow plowing for our kids. We're helicoptering in on top of them. And we want to make sure that we're making their lives as easy as possible. 
That may or may not work. I don't know. We'll have to see. My kids seem to be doing pretty well, but I'm always pushing them to work hard. And I think the key to self-esteem and your personal success is hard work. Yeah. But I think this is a huge problem, and I think it stems from us. I mean, you know, yeah. the, as you know, they say, you know, the fish stinks from the head down. I mean, we're a bunch of babies. <laughs> we baby these people. Yeah. Uh, and so it's my fault, you know. I, I've had to cancel. My son's going to be mad at me. I've had to cancel my credit card. Stop using my credit card. Okay, please. Okay, I don't even want to tell you what's on there. When I look at it on my app, I'm like, are you kidding me? Over Over American eats. Express. Stop it. Stop using it. All right, we're going to get you on the right. motorbike in a minute. Wait, Great. can you give us one item you found in the credit cards? Yeah, um, just one. Yeah, but it would have to be after dark. All right. Do we have a Fox, do we have a Fox yeah. after dark app? I mean, I can talk to Peter oh, about so this much. all night. You know what? Maybe later, Fox Nation. We'll do a segment on it. <laughs> thanks. Anthony, thanks a lot. Right. Appreciate thanks. it. Always good.